saved in the Pecom library somewhere. My guess is that you too. You and you too. <laughs> My hope is that I do get to continue to do these lectures, even if it's on YouTube, because I think we get to see different things every time we come. The museum is like the zoo. We don't get to pick all the time what we see, but whatever's here will be very exciting. I promise. So I want to start us here at Kuan Yin. Kuan Yin is the healing goddess in the um, Buddhist tradition. And one of the things that's really neat about Kuan Yin and about any of the Buddha statues you see is you can always tell what part of the world that you're in because she will have the features, just like the Buddha, will have the features of the people that are there. And so you'll find this to be the case with your own medicine. You will adapt certain parts of Chinese medicine that are special because they are, represent Chinese medicine. And then there's certain things that are just you that are going to come out. So when we look at Kuan Yin here, we can see immediately, let's just start with the fact that she looks Chinese, right? She has Chinese features. She has the features of a beautiful Chinese woman, which you may not know, but I'll tell you what they are. I want to point out how svelte she looks, how big in the hips she looks. That's considered very attractive. Um, she has a very flat face uh, and a double chin, again, indicating her like uh, beauty and also um, just that she's well fed and well taken care of. So this would be the kind of thing that you would have in a temple. It would just be like a little a little statuette that is um, for worshiping, um, where you can pray, you can light incense, you can light candles. Um, and to her, you would pray for both skills, you would pray for healing, you would pray for others, right? So you can go to her for, like we as acupuncturists can go to her and say, I want to be the best acupuncturist I can. But people who are trying to heal can also go and see her. But some characteristics that she has is just universal to uh, healing in the sense of like our medicine. So for example, I want you to notice that she has huge ears. The Buddha is almost always pictured with huge ears and all of the disciples and uh, uh, followers also have huge ears. And these huge ears are the same thing as having huge kidneys. Right? This is a moment where, this is one of the first moments when we can talk about, hey, the same things that we look for when doing facial diagnosis, or the same things that we're thinking about, like we should add this herb, you will see those things being done in the art. The art and the culture and what's going on historically are all going to be reflecting the same thing. So, Kuan Yin has huge ears. She has huge ears because huge ears means longevity. She has huge ears because long, huge ears means long life. She has huge, she has huge ear lobes because, the, because when we just make the parallel of the body, that means a huge brain. Other things that you're going to notice when you look at her, you're going to notice that she has these amazing uh, flowers in her hair. Oftentimes, it's a lotus. That lotus is going to come up time and time again in our tour. There's a couple reasons for that. One, whoever bought all this art to give to the museum really freaking loves lotuses. Like the amount of lotuses that are here are like it's overrepresented, frankly. But the other reason why is that the lotus is a special symbol of renewal. And we see that symbol because, and it's a Buddhist symbol of renewal, out of the muck grows this beautiful thing. And that's the image of the Buddha. That's the way he needed to return to sort of live with the people and meditate in, in all these different ways to gain all this knowledge. Out of all this like chaos comes something beautiful. And that beautiful thing is from his heart, which is why every part of the lotus treats the heart. And so of course, Kuan Yin, who is a healer herself, is going to be pulling on that energy <coughs> as well. The other thing that you need to know about our tour today is that we're going to be sort of following the progression of philosophy that sort of goes throughout China, as well as our medicine, right? We're going to be moving from these ideas of like animism and external invasions. We're going to go all the way into like longevity and tonics just through the art, just like we do, just like our book follows, just like our materia, not materia, but the formula book follows that pattern. I've been um, 
the art follows that pattern too. You're going to see sort of that movement in from exterior invasions to tonics. Uh, once something is introduced, however, that doesn't mean that it goes away. It's then, it's then intertwined into the cultural fabric and built upon. So just because I say, look, we have a representation of yin-yang theory right here starting in the, in the warring states, yet you're going to see that same image being used to describe yin-yang through the rest of the art with more and more and more intricacy put onto it. Does that make sense to everybody? All right. I'm making sure I didn't forget anything. Oh. The other thing that's always important to know, and that's going to be very relevant here, is that history is always written by the current winners. Right? And so because we have a lot of historical writings through China and there was a lot of winners, we can have these different perspectives. But in some ways, this museum, this museum, which really has like you know a lot of stuff from emperors, is an idea of winners. Like, it's too nice a museum to show us everyday things. So you should know that what we're looking at is one person's pers one person's perspective of what should be good Chinese art, and then my perspective of what this art is saying. So if you find something that you disagree with, and we may disagree with things as we go, I may say something like, "I don't think that's a lotus. I think it's a this." That's okay. That's part of the deal. Rewriting and figuring out that history together is going to be, is what we're all doing, is what we're striving for. Does anybody have any questions before we go into the gallery? Back to this ima these images later. Here. Is everything okay? Good. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So this is the place that we always start. And I want you to know where we are in time. We are at about uh, 1,500 BCE. So we are approximately 3,000 years ago, okay, or more, 3,000 plus years ago. This is the stuff that we always talk about in the beginning. These are wine cups and wine holders. They are tripod. Right? And you'll see the image of three coming up time and time again. Remember in Chinese medicine, first there's the nothing, then there's the one or the wu, then it splits into yin and yang, and then when yin and yang split, we immediately get the third, which is qi. And that yin and yang is heaven or earth heaven, and then man is the qi. Right? That's the other image that we can use. So we're constantly having this three to represent life. Now, they're described in these things as wine vessels, but they're clearly very special wine vessels. And um, if you talk to people who actually have sort of looked inside of them, they weren't just making wine, they were making medicinal wine as well. And sometimes this wine had the point of making people healthier, and sometimes it was a way of communicating with the spirits. If you read, especially because a lot of these were in graves. So a lot of these you would drink from in the moment before you would talk to your ancestors. Now we already know herbs that allow you to have better relationships with your ancestors. Can anyone think of any? Shengma. Shengma. Lingzhi. Lingzhi. Tianma. These are herbs that people would cook inside the wine so that they could have a, a easier time reaching the spirit world. If you look on the inside, and that's what these rubbings are, these rubbings are of, some of them are um, so that you can see better, but some of these are actually on the inside. It'll say a name, it's the family name. So you, you, they use that image as well to call it forth. If you look, there are, in all the descriptions it says monsters. These are not monsters, guys. They'd be monsters if they were your enemies. But these are your guardians. They are the things that are allowing you to talk to your ancestors. They're the, they're the gateway in between. And so I want you to look, and there's, these guys are all over the place. There's tons of these vessels. And I want you to see, you're going to see animal inside animal, animals making up the horns of other animals. These are guardians that are going to help you to communicate with the your ancestral, your ancestors who are going to help you. So that's what these are. We'll take a look at those in a second. 
I want to draw your attention as well to the oracle bones. Now we always talk about the oracle bones as one of the sources for beginning medicine. We know that people looked to the oracle bones, they would write out their question about the weather, they would write out their question about health, they would write about their question about the future, and then uh, a shaman would come in and he would break the oracle bone. That's why these are broken, not just because they're old, but because the way that these broke up would then reveal how to fix the problem. The thing about shamans is that at this time, illness is perceived not as a virus or bacteria or even external invasion, the way that we talk about it. A sickness or an illness is perceived as a punishment from the gods. And so that's why it was so important to communicate with the gods to find out what was wrong, why was it wrong, and how to fix it. This is one of the many ways um, at that time that we have, that we know about the idea of illness. So that is in here. So you, I want you guys to look at these and see, you'll recognize some of the characters in fact. And then the last thing that's in this room that we're talking about from 3,000 years ago is we have a lot of bells. Now if you go to Thailand or Vietnam or India or Nepal now, you're also going to see bells that are very much the same. And these are prayer bells. And what people would do is they would come and play them, or they would have a whole bunch in a row that they would bang along. Now it'll say here, mm, these are just percussive instruments. But the fact that people go to these bells with their complaints about their illness reveals to us that there was an idea that sound was healing. And you know that from your, um, uh, from your Qigong classes that we use certain sounds, certain tones, and certain pitches to do different healings. And that these bells, they can be general for healing, but you will also find people be specific, like in the Tibetan singing bowls, certain, certain singing bowls are designed for bone heal. Certain singing bowls are better for stomach complaints and so on. So there is, we are, at this time, we already know that they are using some aspects of sound chant and tone to heal people because that's what is written inside the bell. So just go ahead, we'll, we'll turn off the thing and you guys can just send this gallery and the next one over. Just look around and I'll be answering questions and find your, find your guardians, all the little guardians inside. We have a change and that is because we are in the Zhou Dynasty which is the time of the warring states. And we begin, the philosophical ideas that we base our medicine on begin to show up in the art as well. This piece is a very good representation of yin and yang. It is circular to represent heaven, and yet the pieces are divided to represent the earth. So we have that square image time and time again. And then we have swirls, which is just yin and yang, interacting, as well as clouds, which are a very sort of confusing thing as in it's water that's in the sky, which is also kind of a yin-yang thing since the sky is supposed to be air and yet there's this water in it. So this vessel is really just about balance, right? If we come this way through the galleries, we're going to see now that's in the Eastern Joe, which is part of the Warring States. Now, we're in the Western Han, right? Just a couple hundred years later, but still part of that same Warring States period. And we have the same images, but different, right? We have the same circular vessel. We have the same squares on it representing Earth. And then we have the yin-yang interacting as it's painted on. Other big thing that has suddenly happened because of this change, we are, we have a piece of pottery that has paint on it, right? It's got, it's been glazed in multiple colors. The thing that's going to happen is, uh, during the Warring States, what comes together? We have the beginning of Confucianism, we have the beginning of Taoism, we have yin-yang theory being sort of the basis of 
Chinese culture. And we will see that at that moment of transformation, we also suddenly are adding glaze to our pots. That we are, instead of just using wine to communicate with the spirits, we are now also using incense, like uh, the Native Americans who use sage to communicate uh, with the ancestors. We can also put things in uh, our incense bowls that are going to allow for more transformative experiences. Um, so you can see here, you'll look at these. These are both, this one especially, is a lotus. So we know that what's happening is that information is coming from the sort of the murky part and being uh, taken up and transformed into something beautiful and enlightening. So that is what this piece of art is telling us. Not only are we burning incense in here, but we are, whatever else we're burning in here is going to lead to this transformative experience. And suddenly that's what's happening in the warring states. Remember that the warring states is also the first time where we have what's written in the warring states that we love so much is the Shanghan Lun and the Jingwei Lun. And we have the first movement in Chinese medicine, at least that we have written, of associating illness not with something beyond ourselves, but with external invasion, right? Illness is happening to me differently from me from other people because of me. Not because of something I did, but just because of who I am, right? And so we're going to be having more personalized interactions, right? Which is why our incense is not so big. <coughs> uh, let's stop here and sort of, oh, the other thing that we have I want you guys to see this wonderful dog. Our guardians have come off the pots. Our guardians are now able to stand in front of our space. And they have, he, this, this dog is lovely. He's just a dog. And we don't have any examples of dogs with other things in them. But you can get art from this time that's also like, has all the intricacies. Like there'll be, you know, pigs on top of dogs, on top of roosters. Or what you would have is like drawings inside the dog. So in this one, and then over there, you're going to see a dragon. The dragon um, has some swirls of the uh, clouds. Very, very beautiful. The other thing that's going to happen is now we're going to start, because, <coughs> because we're really worried about the afterlife, because the warring states is such a confusing time, we are, we're going to come over here, and I'll show you. We start to give people things that they need in the afterlife, not just food, but you'll notice here is a pigsty, a well-decorated pigsty complete with pigs, just in case you're hungry or maybe you need to continue whatever occupation you had before. So we have this real shift again into the personalization of what's happening in this warring states time where people are suddenly up in arms. So I'll have you guys check out, this is all, um, this is all stuff that you would put into your grave if you were a rich man. And then you're going to see more and more of the swirling yin-yang art. See what kind of yin-yang stuff you can see. And then we'll come back and do like a, a quick little tootle around. OK, so now we have a more stable place uh, in the Three Kingdoms. We're almost into the Tang Dynasty here. And what you're going to see is a strong influence of the beginning of our reaching out from the Han Chinese and the Mongols into Korea. So the stuff that we saw in the beginning when we showed up, you're going to see the same kind of glaze. Also, I want you to notice that there's a camel there. So we have an introduction of new animals. And we're beginning to put herbal images onto the where so it's not just animals that become important what you're seeing right there is a peony box right and as we know peonies um, are associated with blood moving so this is actually for a lady hmm. if you look over here you're going to see the lotus looking very very different this lotus petal bowl you don't even need the underling part all of a sudden you can just drink to become transformed this is another nice one. Mm -hmm. right. The Tang Dynasty part 
Um, here we are in the Tang Dynasty. This is still the exploration of culture and art. And what you're, you always will know you're in the Tang Dynasty. So there's a little bit of Chinese history, art history as well. You'll always know you're in the Tang Dynasty because suddenly you have this beautiful green and orange. So if you see a horse or a camel or a man that's suddenly green and orange, what, what are we talking about? We're talking about the Tang Dynasty. And the other thing, so not only are we getting new animals, like camels, and new pigments, like green and this very vivid orange, and new hairstyles, and new hats. We have not seen these before. These are not Chinese. This is part of the exchange. But we also have new, these pigments are not dissimilar from some of the new medicinals we have and some of the new ideas that are coming in. So. Um, this is the time when we start to see the first flourishing, this Tang Dynasty, of the Wen Bing, because we have such exchange that we're not just getting colds and flus and external invasions from the north, but also stuff is coming up from the south. And when stuff comes up from the south, it's hot. And then we start to have the Wen Bing coming in. So when we start talking about Wei Qi, Ying Qi, uh, sorry, Wei Qi, Qi Qi, Ying Qi, and Blood Qi. That's because people are trying to think of a new way to deal with all these heat and rash diseases that are fever diseases that are suddenly coming up. But I want you to look around, check out the awesome hairstyles and hats. I want you to see how different everybody looks as well. Um, and then we're gonna we have a really great example of our guardians coming out even, now they're really guardians. They're coming out even further. They don't just live on the very, the very steps. They're gonna be on the outside of our villages and you're gonna see bigger guardians. And then you're gonna see another example of a beautiful woman, a beautiful Chinese woman, just to give you the contrast over there on a horse. So just so you know, like this is what we consider the ideal beauty and the Tang Dynasty is a time of amazing, amazing art and like it's the when the first novels are written in Chinese like they tell all these it's the time of ghost stories it's the time of novels it's the time of telling great tales uh, to everyone and so that's what these these guys are part of this storytelling that's coming forth and when we're done with this room we'll go back to the area that you were so come with me I want to show you this beautiful Chinese woman who uh, is one of our many here she is. She's a nun. But don't let that stop you because who knows what she's doing. <laughs> she's a nun. She's a nun. She's yeah, yeah, but you know the stories. Anything can happen in those stories. It's like the internet. <laughs> she's so gorgeous. Okay. Uh, tramping on other gods. Like you can see, all of a sudden we have, oh my gosh, some of the guardians are getting downgraded to like people you tremble. Mm -hmm. I love how they have the glaze drip. <laughs> I mean, that was probably intentional? Yeah, yeah. it was, because they can. Yes. So, <laughs> so that is the, um, that's the end of our sort of pottery tour. I hope you learned a lot about Chinese art. I hope that now you can look at a piece of art and you'll be able to say like, oh, I know this is from 2,000 years ago. I know this is from 4,000 years ago. I know this is from the Tang Dynasty. I know this is from the Ming Dynasty. And you can remember in your head what's happening in the world of Chinese medicine at that time too. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.